we don't often have a line like this outside of Bellwoods, but for special releases, people often come from all over to, to get these limited run releases. We're grateful to have a lot of interest in some of the things that we're making, and one of the things we're doing today is releasing a beer called Skeleton Key, and the people that follow us decided to come down and line up so that they could actually get some. Super rich Imperial Stout. Not quite as sweet, but it's like got that all that like cognac complexity. Sometimes it's kind of hard to believe, to be honest. It's like these people all want this product so badly that they're willing to come down on a Friday at 11 and sit in the line to make sure that they actually get some. I find it kind of unbelievable. And I'm ecstatic that people are excited about the same beers that we are. It's hugely rewarding and, and I'm hugely grateful for that support from people. My name is Luke Pestel and I'm one of the co-owners and brewers at Bellwoods Brewery in downtown Toronto. My name is Mike Clark, we're at Bellwoods Brewery in Toronto and I'm a co-owner and brewer here. We pretty much both dropped out of grad school biochemistry or biochemical engineering programs to get into brewing. That's the quick and dirty summary of it. I met Luke, I guess, four years ago. I got a job working as a brewer at another brewery in downtown Toronto, and Luke was also there. We both wanted to open a, a small brew pub, craft brewery. It was like very apparent that we had the same vision and even the same area where we wanted to open. It was very obvious from an early stage that it was a good fit. We officially opened the doors April 6th of 2012. It's been busy since we opened the doors. It's been really good. What Luke and I were doing today, which is sort of a regular thing on Friday, is to take samples from various barrels that we have, ranking them for how well they're doing and how the process that's happening inside those barrels is evolving over time. We'll give it a one through a five, a one being, you know, we would, we would love it on its own, a two being, it's great, but we're gonna blend it with other things, a three being, it's sort of on the bubble, four, it needs more time, or five, there are major issues with it. Just to keep it simple, probably the most important thing that we do is we also just say whether or not we like it or not. The cranberry's great. Yeah. I like it personally. Do you? I mean, yeah. it's definitely a ginger beer. Um, not ginger beer, but ginger focused beer. Um, it's not too thin on the palate. No, not at all. Um, and it still has like a really if nice... If you don't like ginger, you're not going to like it. But... No, I mean, I don't think it's overpowering. We have samples of a triple, a barrel aged triple that had apricots and cranberries in it, as well as samples of a Berliner Weiss that had ginger and apricot in it. Yeah, there's definitely more apricot in this one too. So we're looking to blend them together to, to create one tasty product. It's all an experiment to us. We're, we're learning as, as the barrel program grows. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. I guess I became a brewer and got interested in beer because a combination of things. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating from both like an art and a science perspective. I love that marriage of, of art and science and being able to apply both of those to, to a single thing. I definitely think Bellwoods is part of the emerging and growing craft beer scene in Toronto. The brewing community and the scene in general in Toronto has improved a lot and continues to improve. It definitely is a community and it's getting better and better, but you know, there obviously is like a, a healthy competitiveness that underlies that and I think that's good for the scene in general. It's, it's really accelerating I think and, and for over the last few years. Stay classies are 2.8%. Session ale. It's an Anchorman reference, of course, and everybody's gonna know that. And it's actually not that easy to make a beer under 3% that doesn't taste like water. And one of the things I'm excited about is this beer called Grandma's Boy, which we haven't actually had on tap for about a year and a half. This beer's great. It's got like super juicy apricot, peach, stone fruit aroma. <laughs> Wizard Wolf, we call it a Session Ale. It's a light pale ale, light and refreshing. Roman Candle, we produce quite a bit. Typical West Coast style IPAs. Our double IPAs, which are Witch Shark and Boogie Monster. Witch Shark's a little bit more malty than, than Boogie Monster, but they're both around 8 to 9%. And Hellwoods is our standard uh, Russian Imperial Stout that comes in at 10%. We do some Saisons. One is called Farmhouse Classic, that's a Brett Saison. Light in color, really crisp and refreshing. And we do a barrel aged version of that with Britannomyces. It's actually a series uh, called Farmageddon and their Brett Barrel Aged uh, Farmhouse Sales, or Saisons. It's a blend of three month, eight month, 10 month, and 14 month aged barrels. We do some Imperial Stouts in barrels. Bring Out Your Dead is a cognac barrel aged Imperial Stout. Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs>
We've been fortunate to get uh, a number of awards. We've gotten a bunch of Canadian Brewing Awards at the, at the CBAs for the last few years. That's been great. Early in 2013, Great Beer rated us the third best new brewery to open in 2012. That was a huge honor. It's really flattering to get awards. Um, and I think at the same time, on a daily basis, it's, it's great to just see people enjoying the things that we're making in this setting. You know, more than anything, constantly trying to impress ourselves, right? And we're easily our own worst critic. You know, we're never completely satisfied. Everything can always be better. We knew we were getting into a lot by going into this space. We knew it was going to be a pain to do what we're doing here. I think we underestimated it by about, you know, 50 or 100%. <laughs> Instead of a crazy setup, we're in two uh, former garages. And it's only actually 1,300 square feet on this side, so we've had to come up with a lot of different solutions to try to take as much advantage of the cubic footage in here. On any given day, anybody here can be putting labels on bottles or you know, using a forklift to move pallets of things in storage to put them onto the van to bring the bottles here in the morning. We don't have much space, and one of the offshoots of that is that we have no space to do like a, a high-speed labeler of any kind, and the unfortunate reality of that is that we have to label every bottle by hand. Sometimes we try to beat each other's record in terms of who can finish the box the quickest. There's a certain skill, as you can see. <laughs> that? It's a pleasure to come and work with such great people. The fact that I can go to work and love my workplace and, and the people that I work with, that, that's the best part. When you come to Bellwoods, you can expect good beer, you can expect good food, um, and good music, and a comfortable, relaxed vibe. You can come here with one person and hang out, you can come here with a group of people, you can come here with your grandparents or your kids, or just like your buddies, and there are different places that you can sit to sort of tailor themselves to different types of situations. I mean, there's like always multiple dates happening here, you can spot them from a mile away, and there are certain tables and little nooks that cater themselves to that kind of, kind of thing, and it's a whole bunch of little micro-environments, really. The menu at Bellwoods changes all the time. We have a great chef, his name is Jay Brown. My name is Jay, I'm the head chef here at Bellwoods Brewery. When somebody comes through the doors at Bellwoods, uh, hopefully they're getting a great all-around service, hopefully they're enjoying the beer, and hopefully along the way they can enjoy the food as much as they did the beer. That's all I hope for. We do want really good handcrafted food to go with our handcrafted beer. Mixed plates, charcuterie, cheese plates, usually three or four different mains available. Um, you know, there's a pasta special on at the moment with braised lamb neck and mint and a few other things and it's delicious. We do as much of it in-house as we can in the best ways that we can. And we bring in the best people that we can. It's very rewarding when I see customers enjoying themselves at Bellwoods. Cask Days is a three-day beer festival here in Toronto, centered around cask ales. It's a fantastic festival, I would say. Probably the best beer festival in Canada. A lot of breweries sending casks from all across Canada, California, Europe, and uh, it's just a great time. It's down in the Evergreen Brickworks, and it's a great venue for a festival too, so yeah, we're really looking forward to it. So outside of being a brewer, I am a father of two sons. I'm a husband. Outside of the brewing industry, my family is my complete life. My kids have grown up with seeing me at work. I love how close my family and my work is. The long-term goal? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I pretty much fly by the seat of my pants, so I have no idea. Ultimately, you know, we're looking to turn this into a healthy company where we have a great set of people that all have really good jobs. Uh, we're making the best possible beer we can be making. I want to be involved in every little detail. I want to be able to, you know, focus on every single barrel that we have. Uh, I definitely want to produce the best beer that I possibly can. I want people to think of us as a brewery with a lot of integrity that, you know, is giving great attention to detail and great care to making the best possible products that we can make. And that's, that's the bottom line. Cheers, guys. Cheers.